All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is here, Sky Dude, back again for it's Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday, huh? Right. Ah, all right. So a little get a bit bleh, bleh. <laughs> a little slow getting started today. And yesterday when I was uh, messing with the graphical settings, trying to get things, you know, when we were looking at buildings, I was changing the building quality. And if we were not paying attention to the, the terrain, I was taking things away and I was moving things around. And this morning when I turned things on, I toggled something and everything was shimmery again. And I'm really not absolutely 100% certain, 100% certain why certain anti-aliasing changes cause everything to flicker really bad. But I've been freaking out for the last half hour because I just couldn't get rid of it. And finally just managed to toggle something right again so all the trees aren't flickering. All right, we are here. Let's see if we if these screens are transitioning right again today. All right, we are here. We flew from Shiprock yesterday. Okay, we started up here. At Chiprock. And we flew all the way to Chaco Canyon and went through Chaco Canyon. And then we made our way over here to Los Alamos and saw that. Came south, went in through Albuquerque and saw Walter White's house and the uh, Air Force Base and yada, yada, yada. Then we took a slight turn and we made our way out here. The very large array, which sadly isn't in 3D, but you can see it. The very large uh, array observatory. All the different um, giant satellite dishes out there. And it does. It, the reason why it shows it like three lines there. There's three giant lines of railroad tracks. Or tracks. And they move those satellite dishes back and forth along those tracks, I guess. That's how they deployed them. I'm not really sure. All right. Well, then we... Flew over here because it just seemed like a great place to end the day and a great name for an airport. Truth and consequences. So we found out yesterday that, uh, but before we found out that it was called, why it was called truth and consequences. I was setting up a landing, and they and the course heading was 007. So we just finished talking about White Sands and New Mexico and all the nu first nuclear tests and spies and this and that. And all of a sudden, we go to land at Truth and Consequences and we get a 007 course heading to come in for uh, Runway 7. thought that was cool. But it actually turns out, well, the story goes, is that there used to be a radio program called Truth or Consequences. And the first town that named themselves, the broadcaster was going to go out there and broadcast from there. So... I don't know what I don't remember what the name was originally uh what it was originally but they changed it to Truth and Consequences. And they did a big radio program from there in the 50s as I understand. And that's where we're at. Okay, so what I want to do now is get going have us get going west again. And I'm going to start looking for any jobs that take us this way, but as we start going this way into uh Nevada, there is a lot of really neat things down here, it seems. It's very populated with uh, with points of interest. So I'm thinking we're definitely going to head down here and then probably up and in, into here and see how far we make it today. All right. So and let's see uh, what's south of us. If there's anything we really want to go down and check out if there's anything really interesting another national forest that is uh Sunland Park racetrack and a casino University of Texas El Paso no I think we can pass those up get my headphones on all right good morning thanks for tuning in hey going to continue our uh third leg today heading west follower friday i need to get something posted on twitter all right, so what was this? This was, is Tortugas Mountain Observatory, so another observatory. 
Eggy Memorial Stadium. Uh-oh. We just lost connection to, to, in Microsoft uh, in the flight simulator. See that? We have an act, active internet connection. Hopefully OBS isn't reporting anything. Let's see here. Keep an eye on it and see if it connects. So far, I don't see any problem with OBS. So just maybe the Microsoft servers. We'll know more in a minute. Okay, let me hop over to Neofly. And we did get paid for our job landing in... Okay, it's successfully reconnected. Uh, we did get paid for our job yesterday. Now let's see about finding one that takes us west. Da, 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 that one. Takes us right to, to Tucson. It's a little bit it's a short one. But... Uh, but hey, that's not bad money for the day. Let's see if the up these rewards. Let's get the high paying ones. See if we can get one going that way. 30. 24. That one again. That's a oh, but it's fragile. That's the fragile's not bad. It's the timed ones. Yeah. That's a timed one. We don't wanna be messing with that. Did we disconnect again? Something's up with the Microsoft servers, folks. Nineteen, nineteen. I think that one uh, probably just is our best bet. Seventeen, nine. Over to six A Z eight. Sounds like a dirt field. Is there anything even there? Really, landing in the dirt with this expensive plane? Hell no. No, no way. You know, let's try to find something else then. Man, those all go north. Timed. E33. Let's see if there's actually a runway there. In Wilcox. Well, yeah, there's something there. Cochise County Airport. E33. 23465 bucks. Yeah, let's take it. Transporter from dispatch. Good morning. The sensitive cargo mission will start as soon as you get in your aircraft in the parking. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. All right. Now I need to open this thing and find out if we are, what our payload is, and so we get our bonuses. Go to career. All right, we need... Another thousand pounds or so. Come over to our weights. Be advised, the fragile cargo looks extremely delicate. Right. We have secured it the best we can. Please taxi with caution. Man, that's a lot of cargo. That's heavy. All right, and that leaves us the rest we can put into fuel. All right, so now we come back to Neofly and put that into fuel. But we don't want to go. Hopefully, we're not overweight. But we've got the fuel now. Let's come in here. All right, we're doing all right. See about putting a tiny bit more fuel. Cut it out. the three hundred dollars all right well we're not we're not redlining anything here so we're good we're in good shape here and we're in good shape here okay so close that close that good good 
Need to log into Bush Talk Radio up in here. I wish it would remember everything. All right, so now that's synced with the client. I didn't have all this done today. Again, trying to get the, the graphic, in, that graphic stuff worked out. It's really painful on the eyes when everything in the trees is shimmering on the ground and everything is shimmering on the ground. I, if you if you use this program, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Um, da, 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 da. What is the name of this air, airport we're going to? P-33. That on or off? Okay, so that's on. E thirty three. Okay, uh, well, yeah, that says we're going the right way. Uh-oh. Must, must have hit an O in there somewhere. Oh, P in there, well, yeah, P33. Derp, derp, derp. And get our propeller up. Quaint little uh, airport here. Oh, 
not getting a start. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, we probably want the fuel the the fuel pump on. Yeah. Go figure, right? That's good little thing. But there we go. We got sweet time. And we have no wind data, so let's listen to the automated weather. Kilo Tango Charlie, Sierra, automated weather observation 1700. Zero, zero, wind 012 at one tree. Visibility 10 in heavy rain. Sky condition, few clouds at 2700 feet. So it's basically coming from the west, so it sounds like we have a tailwind. And it was, uh, sorry about that. Read out, no, you can do that again. 3023 for the altimeter. Nice, it was set pretty much. so derpy today i wanted a west barger did they assign us a runway okay runway 31 okay let's find 31 one is 31 Yep. So oh, we are there. All right. Gotcha. Uh, please don't tell us we don't have that bug going on again. So if you sit too long, mucking about like I did setting everything up, sometimes it's happened to us over the last couple of days, where you're frozen. And all I can do is go back to the main menu and spawn at the runway. Well, is what it is. Oops. Is what it is. Same as it ever was. I'm really timid about wanting to put the music on today because, again, still been having problems with the uh, copyright. Crazy.
Hello, Captain. Hello nice again. To see you again. Yeah, yeah. You too. Well, I hear you anyway. Dispatch to pilot. The cargo being loaded is documented as fragile. Please take extra care, especially when wheels are on the ground. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. Okay. Transporter, loading is complete. Let's go. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Transporter, have a nice flight. Keep the cargo secure. All right. Cross country, leg three. Go west, boy. I did not pull up Sky Vector to look over the terrain. So let's uh clear all this. That's our new route. And I see 9,400, 8,000 here. Eight, seven. Just to be safe, let's go to nine. Yeah, there's a hill coming up ahead. Of Barely make it out in the mist, but with our synthetic vision here, yeah, that's a problem. All right, you, climb, baby.
going up in here. Good. So heading this direction. Aldo Leopold Wilderness. Kneeling Nun Tuff. Tino Mine. Silver City. Blue Creek Wilderness Study Area. Won't be able to see the cliff dwellings, but that'd be nice. What we say right now we can't see a thing nine four uh let's go nine seven and then four five six seven just to be safe We'll break out of it here shortly. See, we're just... Hey. Where are we headed this way? going the wrong way and it's not paying attention that's strange it didn't take it the first time now it's taking it give that page a moment to see if it catches up and starts following us if not yesterday we had to log out and log back in and then it started following us right now i don't see our icon moving it's always something every day something
Why are you pain in the butt? Alright, let's try it over here. Oh, it's because we had to go back out. Uh. <laughs> That's why. But this is, this is re lined in. I think our icon's moving now. Now it's moving again. All right, we're in business. Albuquerque Center, Kenny S21. Request clearance. We're breaking out of this out of these clouds here in a second. All right, now we're on cruise, basically. Starting to come out of it. All right. Don't know that I want to live there. So yeah, if you if you if you notice that all your trees and ground objects are are shimmering, mess with your anti alias settings either in your Nvidia or AMD control panel, and or in the in the simulator itself. I just started I got nervous and, and started just freaking out and just started flipping switches. But like sometimes it seemed to kick in and sometimes it didn't. The drag about it is you usually have to restart the program after making any major changes. And man, that takes a while. But when you're up against a, I need to start at 10 a.m. Start panicking. Hello. Are you live? Hello, hello. I'm sorry. Well, see, I never get anybody chatting. I hope you're still there. Well, I never get anybody chatting. And so... <laughs> so I normally... I'm sorry, but because nobody really ever chats with me. Um, I, uh... I keep... I don't... I have it right up in the corner, but I failed to look at it until just now. So I don't normally look at it because nobody ever chats with me. But hello. Thank you, Kesha. Kesha says, is this a replay? I feel like it's a replay. You would have seen this by now, right? No. <laughs> no. Not, not normally, not me.
All right. So yeah, last three days been uh, doing a cro my second cross country, and uh, now we're in. Uh, Just leaving New Mexico, really, or soon will be, and crossing into Nevada. We're over the Aldo Leopold Wilderness area right now. And we are headed to P33 in Cochise, Cochise County to make seventeen thousand dollars sounds like a lot but with fuel and everything else and eh. put that out there a little bit more quiet I normally have music and I'll, I'll, I'll probably turn it back on it uh, but there's been a problem the last few days with uh, my service and people out there claiming copyright on everything and it's been a real drag always make sure the YouTube safe Slider is on. We'll go ahead and try it today. Mountains come from. He's Woo. watching over me. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. Oh, yeah. He's watching over me. When the going gets tough and I feel like giving in, I reach down deep inside. Yes, I'm trying to get the win. Fight is hard, I'm being slammed again. Fist starts to grow as I feel the war begin. Though I'm looking at the valley of the shadow of death and fear, I can carry on because I feel him near. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. Oh, yeah. He's watching over me. When all seems lost, think about the man who gave it all for me, who died for my sin. Those path wasn't easy, he never complained. He paid the price on the cross, it was blood stained. He walked through that battle, one of death and fear. Yes, he carried on now, feel him near. Yeah! That's a new one. I haven't heard that one before.
Yeah, let's take a slight deviation here. I don't know that we're going to be able to see anything. I doubt it. But... I'll try. Alright, so I've changed our core setting and broken off from nav for a minute. On the day I was born, a hard rain and uh, we're heading over towards these um, cliff dwellings. Again, I don't know that we'll be able to see anything or not, but we'll find something out. We'll learn something. Pretty. Hey, thank you for the like. I really appreciate that. Every little bit helps. Every like and uh, and I got a subscriber yesterday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. was designated the world's first wilderness area on June 3, 1924. Along with Aldo Leopold Wilderness and Blue Range Wilderness, the 558,014 acres wilderness is part of New Mexico's Gila National Forest. The wilderness is approximately 27 miles from north to south and 39 miles east to west. U.S. wilderness areas do not allow motorized or mechanized vehicles, including bicycles, Camping and fishing are allowed with proper permit, but no roads, buildings, logging, or mining are permitted. Wilderness areas within National Forests and Bureau of Land Management areas allow hunting in season. 
The Gila Wilderness is located in southwest New Mexico, north of Silver City and east of Reserve. It contains the West Fork, Middle Fork and much of the East Fork of the Gila River. Riverside elevations of around 4,850 feet are the lowest in the wilderness. The Mogollon Mountains traverse an arc across the wilderness. The tallest peak within this range, Whitewater Baldy at 10,895 feet, is in the northwest part of the wilderness along with several other summits more than 10,000 feet high. At the northeast corner is prominent Black Mountain rising to at 9,287 feet the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument is adjacent to the wilderness. The Gila Wilderness is the largest designated wilderness area in New Mexico. All right, I'm going to pause here for a moment. One, I need to make an adjustment to the drone camera. It's moving entirely too fast. So uh, bring the speed on that down. And that's probably good there. Uh, now, if we look down in here. Okay, so we entered the Gila wilderness area, which we've learned about. But now we've got this to our left. And those are the cliff dwellings. Zoom in. All right, let me make an adjustment here. Yeah, and I don't know that we'll be able to see anything, but let's get at least to the area. So. Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument is a U.S. national monument created to protect Mogollon Cliff Dwellings in the Gila Wilderness on the headwaters of the Gila River in southwest New Mexico. The 533-acre national monument was established by President Theodore Roosevelt through executive proclamation on November 16, 1907. It is located in the extreme southern portion of Catron County. Visitors can access the monument by traveling northbound from Silver City, New Mexico, 45 miles on NM-15. Considered by archaeologists to be on the northernmost portion of the Mogollon people's sphere of influence, the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument is home to two prominent ruin sites among a collection of smaller sites located within the Gila Wilderness inside the Gila National Forest. Archaeologists have identified 46 rooms in the five caves on Cliff Dweller Canyon and believe they were occupied by 10 to 15 families. The terrain around the ruins is rugged and arid and contains steep-sided canyons cut by shallow spring rivers and mesas and bluffs forested with ponderosa pine, gambles oak, Douglas fir, New Mexico juniper, pinyon pine, and alligator juniper, among others. The area geologic history stems from the Oligocene epoch and volcanic activity that subsequently covered the area with ash. The monument's hot springs are remnants of this volcanic history. All right. Well, we're in the uh, we're in the right area, and it says it's the over here. So. Yeah, where our plane is, I think, is there. Looks like that there's some touristy, yeah, some touristy stuff or roads, and then there's some structures out there. But, uh, yeah, not going to be the best thing to see until they actually put it as a point of interest in the simulator and build up some stuff like they did with Chaco Canyon yesterday. That was quite nice. And the place behind us that we missed, that we passed, that was just uh... Oh, that's just the, the... Okay, so we've done that, the Gila Wilderness. All right, what's next? What's next? So if we keep going west... And There's really no points of interest. Hell Hole Wilderness Study Area. So let's just put it back into... 
nav and get back on course for heading to P33. Well, it's neat though. I mean, if you're ever in New Mexico, I think that'd be a cool place to visit. Check out. Really, I, I really love the area. I think it's, you know, these nice little rolling, non-threatening hills. And lots of vegetation. Beautiful trees. Douglas firs. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nothing I can do. Let's check our stats. And having a little bit of lag, but that's mostly from switching back and forth to the music. I don't know why the music didn't, uh, I mean, you wouldn't have known on your end being anything. You would have never detected what was going on back here. But the, uh, The music, when the when the bush talk radio kicked in, it uh, didn't respond to my turning it down. Right. See, there it did. Whatever.
Sunday church gonna come too soon So we better make the best of this Memphis moon There's a look in our eyes and a bump and a grind And a bar full of boys about to lose their minds Cause a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do We're coming in hot, better make some room And pretty gets better as the night rolls on And all my girls got it going up strong And we'll be seeing Let's ride Oh, yeah, one for the ladies. Yeah, sure.
That's weird. I don't see anything listed on the map out here for this area. Yes, that's it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, there's a little airport over there. That was a cute tune. so hard to imagine what it was like what it must have been like you know before the inventions of you know the highways and the automobile and I mean really just I mean it's beautiful but horseback and then going slower if you just weren't on a horse like a covered wagon and making your way across all of this just oh my gosh people were so much tougher and stronger and you know their sense of time must have been completely different how they 
you know. Ah, uh, we're gonna go over to the Comstock load. It'll take uh, three weeks for the travel. Yeah, great. Now we freak out. Three weeks. We can get there in three hours now. And then looking at the train, you're like, well, we can't go forward. We have to go around this way and then cut back through here and then turn here and then try to make our way across here. And, you know, scouting it all out as you went. Oh, my gosh. There's an observatory over there. Bang, a roadside attraction. so close to our target but I don't want to come back let's go ahead and do a little diversion west and see if we can see that observatory Yikes. Maybe, maybe not. Too much cloud coverage. But it's a ways out there still, so we'll see.
so there's so this is a place called Duncan. Then I guess that marker over here was the airport. Maybe. Anyway, this place is called Duncan. Here's the airport. Look, that's Clifton? The huh? Duncan Municipal. I think that's a historical airport. They're calling it Clifton. No trees, but I mean, just gorgeous. I mean, I'm sure there are trees, but they look rather bald. But still, at the same time, it's like, man, imagine having some sleds and skis and around here. I wonder if you ever even get snow out here. But they're just so soft. Yeah, I imagine sledding down everything. Guys got it bad. Miss your fingers caressing the back of my head. I miss that extra blanket you always bring. I miss watching you get ready to go out. I miss feeling like there's never any doubt. Yeah, I wonder what the structure of these are, because the uh, just the change in color, the dramatic change in color, those are all soft and tan, and these, then you get these areas that are like really black, like black hills. Yeah, what is all that? Sing along. I miss hearing your voice. 
Hey, thanks for stopping in. Happy Friday to you. Just doing my third leg of the cross country, heading west. Heading towards a place called the Graham uh, Observatory. See if we can see anything. Good, please. Let me beg. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Making about three bucks. With your help, I can make three dollars and one cent, and that's great. Hey, three dollars and one cent is better than three dollars. Hope you have a great weekend planned. Well, I hope she comes back to him. I really do. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see something. We're getting a lot closer. It'll just be a few minutes. How high is that? Oh, I wonder... 
better look on Sky Vector. Oh, it won't tell us where we're at though. Well, probably get a good idea. My Sky Vector screen. Okay, so we're probably here. So that mountain is going to be like 11 1 at least. Yeah, we better go up. Um, Go, boyo. Nice of it to clear up, though, when we're getting there. I wonder if that's the marker up there for the observatory. I hope there's something there. That's the highest I see.
It is located in southeastern Arizona's Pinalino Mountains near Mount Graham. Construction of Mio began in 1989. Mio currently operates and maintains facilities for three scientific organizations. The first two telescopes, the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope and the Heinrich Hertz Submillimeter Telescope, began operations in 1993. The Large Binocular Telescope, one of the world's largest and most powerful optical telescopes, began operations using mirrors independently in 2004, with joint operations between the two mirrors beginning in 2008. Well, again, it's probably not, I mean, there's no marker here for it. So it's not something Microsoft has put in, but this is the area. All right, well, it was worth it. To, I mean, you know, who knows? Just a shot in the dark, see if there was something there. I mean, a little structure there. All right, well, let's get back on course then. Let's see. Anything else in the area that we want to detour? Nah, not until we get over here. We might as well go to our destination and get paid. So. Not a good place to crash. Like they got a small structure down there. One little lone house on the side of a hill. A lot of little roads over here. That's neat. Four thousand one hundred and eighty seven feet.
probably want three. Oops. By V U B. So, if this is right, we need to hit, we'll be hitting this point here in 20 some odd miles. Then we turn to a course setting of 34 degrees. We want us to 7 2 there. I think we'll be alright. 1000. Well, let's do what it wants 7 2. They've got the water in Cochise County. I wonder if that's it over there then, and not that. Although that looks like a strip. But, we gotta make a turn to 34. Is it? Yeah, so we go out there and then we turn around and come back. Actually, then. And the wind switched on us.
Oh, I'm the hangman. Only one is coming in on that side. <laughs> well, all right then. that it should say right hand entry no it says left Does not matter to me, baby. Where's this upwind? I get it mixed up. Alright, the airport is called P-33, and we're getting ready to land here in Cochise County. Make a few dollars for the day, and then we'll continue on our way a little bit more.
Nice landing, pilot. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. Since Tuesday, trying to stop from being blue. I've been living on soup since Tuesday, just tearing my heart out over you. pilot cargo unloading all right I'm getting paid actually probably get probably do two jobs today since we're heading we're not done yet i want to travel along this corridor transporter from dispatch cargo unloaded and checked it is always a pleasure to work with you uh oh come on You are clear to start your engine. Even if he's going to Tucson. That way. Twenty-four thousand. Well, they've got a runway, and it's just a sensitive. It's not a time-based. So another twenty-four for the day. Yeah, let's do it. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a fragile cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting to carefully load the crates for you in the parking. KGXF. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. Okay. KGXF. Says it doesn't exist. Flight crew. Be advised, the fragile cargo looks extremely delicate. Type it in wrong. We have secured it the best we can. AGFX. with caution. All right, so I got to ditch this job because in the simulator it says it doesn't exist. Pilot, stand by. The cargo is being removed. Okay, I'll try something else. Okay, that one's going to Wilcox. AWSD, let's try that one. Dispatch to pilot. The cargo being loaded is documented as fragile. Please take extra care, especially when wheels are on the ground. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. AWSD. White Sands. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo is on board. You are clear to taxi to the runway and take off. All right, let's check our weights, our package weights to get our pay. Right, we're deficient. One thousand four hundred and ninety-two pounds. Heavy. Not far though. All right, 
then we can add some more to fuel. Expand. Okay, good. We're still underweight, not redlining anything. We're gonna get our bonus plus a plus forty six experience, whatever, whatever that is. Two nine nine six. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Already done. see yeah that's probably enough all right so now up ahead we have here we have the thing roadside attraction won't be able to see that Arch. Arch in her cavern state park won't be able to see that. Little Rincon Mountains. Rincon Mountains. So really just stuff in Tucson. Hello. Prima Air and Space Museum. Airport. Boeing, YAL. Airport Graveyard. Yeah, we definitely need to see that. That's crazy. EMA. Mission... Then Xavier Delbach. University of Arizona. Park Zoo. 
Old Tucson Studios. I think we're over here somewhere. right as we're going backwards did I pick the wrong job did I pick the wrong job again I think I may have no clipped into Wilcox unless it shot it up here no it couldn't work clipped him No, I did it wrong. Yep, I picked the wrong job. Dang it. Yep. And I can't do this with the engine running. It's difficult. Stand by. The cargo is being removed. Really? Well, there's one outside of Phoenix, KBXK. And we're heading that way anyway. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting for you in the parking to load the crates. The ground crew are loading the cargo. Stand by. updating abxk okay pilot that's everything stowed securely we're ready for taxi i was probably right just displaying it wrong well, let's see what it says in here 
Yeah, that's right. All right, well, let's go find that plane graveyard. A tus. All right. <clears throat> Five, four, four, three.
so we need to be on this about this heading if we're gonna make that graveyard and then we'll get back to our heading in the right direction for the landing XK so We're heading this way right now, so 8,000 feet there 9895 Fine Plenty fine at 10. We'll do an out hold there.
This doesn't sound very country. Based on Sky Vector, we should be able to clear it all, but boy, it's got me kind of got me kind of scared. Nothing should be higher than like nine five over here, and we're going this way. I don't see anything over eight. Eight four. Oh, six. So oh, six or eight. Yeah, so according to this, you know, we've got to trust your maps. So, but looking out the window, it's like, uh, I don't know. That's a perspectives, you know. perspective we shall see The Rincon Mountains are a significant mountain range east of Tucson, Pima County, Arizona, in the United States. 
The Rincon Mountains are one of five mountain ranges surrounding the Tucson Valley. The other ranges include the most prominent, the Santa Catalina Mountains to the north, the Santa Rita Mountains to the south, the Tucson Mountains to the west, and the Tortolita Mountains to the northwest. Reddington Pass separates the Rincon Mountains from the Santa Catalina Mountains. The Rincon Mountains are generally less rugged than the Santa Catalina Mountains and Santa Rita Mountains. The Rincon Mountains are also included in the Madrian Sky Island mountain ranges of southeast Arizona, extreme southwest New Mexico, and northern Sonora, Mexico. Rincon is Spanish for corner, denoting the primary shape of the mountain range. Mica Mountain, the high point of the Rincons forms the apex, with Rincon Peak forming the southern point, and Tonque Verde Peak forming the western point of the corner. The interior of the corner is Rincon Valley, primarily former ranchland currently being converted to tract housing. Colossal Cave County Park, a limestone cave and popular destination, is located on the east end of the Rincon Valley, north of the community of Vale. East of the Rincons are the Little Rincon Mountains. Between these two ranges is a popular destination for locals for camping, hunting, and off-roading. Farther east is the San Pedro River of the San Pedro Valley, a Holocene paleontology region. South of the Rincon Mountains, beyond Rincon Valley is the Cienega Creek and Interstate 10. Most of the Rincon Mountains are within Saguaro National Park, or in the Rincon Mountain Wilderness of the Coronado National Forest. Yeah, I can definitely see the corner shape that they were talking about looking out like this way. Let's make a little corner here. All right, let's check and see how far we are from the plain graveyard. We need to turn our heading just a few degrees. says it's right over here so we're nearing uh, this is Tucson Davis Montham Air Force Base. Got a couple more degrees. Now it's saying it's still south.
Ага. on this I better pause this actually pause the music we learned to fly all right The Boeing Yao-1 Airborne Laser Testbed Weapon System was a megawatt class chemical oxygen iodine laser mounted oh, inside a modified military aircraft same as the Boeing 747-400F. It was primarily designed as a missile defense system to destroy tactical ballistic missiles while in boost phase. The aircraft was designated Yao-1A in 2004 by the U.S. Department of Defense. The Yal-1 with a low-power laser was test-fired in flight at an airborne target in 2007. A high-energy laser was used to intercept a test target in January 2010, and the following month, successfully destroyed two test missiles. Funding for the program was cut in 2010 and the program was cancelled in December 2011. It made its final flight on February 14, 2011 to Davis Manthan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona to be kept in storage at the Boneyard by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. It was ultimately scrapped in September 2014 after all usable parts were removed. Origins, the Airborne Laser Laboratory was a less powerful prototype installed in a Boeing NKC-135A. It shot down several missiles in tests conducted in the 1980s. The Airborne Laser Program was initiated by the U.S. Air Force in 1996 with the awarding of a Product Definition Risk Reduction Contract to Boeing's ABL team. In 2001, the program was transferred to the MDA and converted to an acquisition program. The development of the system was being accomplished by a team of contractors. Boeing Defense, Space and Security provides the aircraft, the management team, and the system's integration processes. Northrop Grumman was supplying the coil, and Lockheed Martin was supplying the nose turret and the fire control system. Cancellation. In December 2011, it was reported that the project was to be ended after 16 years of development and a cost of over 5 billion US dollars. While in its current form, a relatively low power laser mounted on an unprotected airliner may not be a practical or defensible weapon, the YAL-1 testbed is considered to have proven that air-mounted energy weapons with increased range and power could be another viable way of destroying otherwise very difficult to intercept sub-orbital ballistic missiles and rockets. On 12 February 2012, the YAL-1 flew its final flight and landed at Davis Manthan AFB, Arizona, where it was placed in storage at the Amarg until it was ultimately scrapped in September 2014 after all usable parts were removed. And now that's saying that's to the right of us, downrange a little bit, over there probably. Um, that's crazy. I mean, it's cool. I mean, we know that lasers ex exist now, and but look at how long they've been working on it. And two different independent contractors, one is supplying the coil, right out of Star Trek, and one supplying the turret. All right, so here's the 
thing for the graveyard here. And it makes me cry. I mean, I can't even uh, afford a real one. And they've got, you know, around the United States, all these graveyards. And I just want to go over there. Can I just have one of these, please? The 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, often called the Boneyard, is a United States Air Force aircraft and missile storage and maintenance facility in Tucson, Arizona, located on Davis Monthan Air Force Base. The 309th Amark was previously Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center and the Military Aircraft Storage and Disposition Center, and its predecessor was established after World War II as the 3040th Aircraft Storage Group. The 309th Amark takes care of nearly 4,000 aircraft, which makes it the largest aircraft storage and preservation facility in the world. An Air Force Material Command Unit, the group is under the command of the Ogden Air Logistics Complex at Hill Air Force Base, Utah. The 309th Amark was originally meant to store excess Department of Defense and Coast Guard aircraft, but has in recent years been designated the sole repository of out-of-service aircraft from all branches of the U.S. government. The arid climate of the region makes the 309th Amark an ideal location for storing aircraft, as there is very little humidity in the air that would corrode metal. Right? You know, I, I don't even need one of the big ones. Just whatever you got. I mean, look at those little small guys. How about one of these ones over here? Hold on. I mean, come on. you. That's just, it's no fair. It's no fair. Planes are so darn expensive, and then just, you know, sure, they could probably bring some of these into operation, but they're all, these are all obsolete, and she's using for parts and maintenance and yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, come on. Surely you can let us have a few of these. That's nuts. One with a laser, preferably. That'd be that'd be even better. All right. So really, there's not much more to see out here in Tucson. Um, we might hit some more of these on the way out, but chances are we're gonna. Gonna make it a sharp turn. Get back on course here. And get back to Davis Manthan Air Force Base is a United States Air Force Base five miles south southeast of downtown Tucson, Arizona. It was established in 1925 as Davis Manthan Landing Field. The host unit for Davis Manthan AFB is the 355th wing assigned to 12th Air Force, part of Air Combat Command. The base is best known as the location of the Air Force Materiel Command's 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, the aircraft boneyard for all excess military and U.S. government aircraft and aerospace vehicles. Okay, so from... Tucson nine five nine But we don't have to worry about too much. I won't we'll be going over there. We're probably good coming down by seven two. All right. Uh, the Reed Park Zoo, founded in 1967, is a 24-acre city-owned and operated non-profit zoo located within Reed Park in Tucson, Arizona. The zoo features more than 500 animals. It was unofficially established in 1965 by Gene Reed, the parks and recreation director at the time. Reed Park Zoo consists of four zones that are organized by the types of habitats and animals they house. 
The adaptation zone houses animals such as the grizzly bear and all dabra giant bear. tortoise. The South America zone houses animals such as the jaguar and spectacled bear. The Asian zone features the tiger, and the African animal zone features animals such as the lion and giraffe. The African animal zone also houses a seven-acre expansion which was opened to the public in 2012. A large aviary named Flight Connection hosts dozens of species of birds from Australia, Africa, and Asia. Well, that's nice. Man, this place is huge. I've always heard, you know, I mean, I don't recall ever traveling through here, but I've always heard just how massive it is and how it goes on and on, and you can definitely see it now. I think Denver is still bigger, though. I mean, it sure seems it at the moment. Just looking at everything, just distance-wise. I think Denver's got it beat. But I would have to uh, check numbers. But just looking at distances and... Yeah, because... Hey Siri, who has a greater population, Denver or Tucson? I found this on the web. Well, I know it's now it says it's Denver is a 22.1% higher cost of living than Tucson. But hey, Siri, what is the Denver population? As of 2020, the population of Denver was 715,522. All right, Siri, what is the population of Tucson, Arizona? Hey, Siri, what is the population of Tucson, Arizona? Here's what I found. Well, what did you find? Speak to us. Hey Siri, what is the population of Tucson? It's not giving me the number. In 2020, the population of Tucson was 542,629. Yeah. But 22% cheaper to live here, huh? Huh. Hey, sir, what is the cheapest place to live in the United States? I found this on the web. Hey, sir, what uh, state provides the best cost of living in the United States? Here's what I found. Mississippi is number one cost of living. Number one in affordability. Alabama, Kentucky, Arkansas, Iowa, New Mexico, South Dakota, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Tennessee. And we should move to Mississippi. Hey, Siri, what is the cost of living difference between Mississippi and Denver, Colorado? I found this on the web. Doesn't say.
sure is nice out of here if you like desert, you know. I mean, I really, I, I appreciate the terrain and the landscape of everything that we see. It'd be tough to leave uh, the mountains in Colorado, but again, yeah, you know, you hear that, wow. Some places are much more affordable. Just from here to Denver, though, 22% difference. And that uh, Tucson didn't even make it on that list we we're talking about, so. All right, let's turn that tunes back on.
Shut your mouth, I'm saying. I don't know how they classify this one as country, but I like it. Shake my love till you 
Pause the music right there for a little bit. Like, how come we're not moving? I forgot to uh, put the power back on. But once we descended down to this altitude, we're just creeping along. I'm like, we haven't really gone very far. So I'm I'm loving all this farm land terrain, and it's awesome. But you know, and I really want to play cities skylines. You know, since we don't have any SimCity anymore. I really wish they would bring back SimCity. Such a, so many possible ways to do it now that we have all this phenomenal compute power. And it's just sad. Anyway, but City Skylines 2 is out. And I, and I can't get an answer so far to the question that does food matter? And it really bothers me that for a simulation like that when you're trying to create cities that Again, the food, just food doesn't matter. It's all just coming from a magical place. And you only need to concern yourself with building your city. And, you know, um, I, I'm not going to say that's 100%. It's just that I can't find any definitive answer at the moment with in the limited searching that I've done to say yes or no that Food absolutely matters, that you can't have a huge population unless in the region or whatever you've created enough food. And I don't think you should be able to build a damn city unless you have food. I think the very first thing you should have to build, which, again, I, all the, the the playthroughs I've seen so far, people just start out building their cities. I, I, again, just it's all being imported from some magical place.
and I don't think that's the way I would want my sim to be at all. Uh, SimCity kind of walked away from that uh, uh, early on, where farming just didn't matter. And, you know, it's it's garbage. It should absolutely matter. Absolutely. And if you don't have uh, a decent, like, different types of food as well, you know, because people ain't just going to eat oatmeal. Unless you got some agriculture and some livestock and you're growing a different variety of things. Well, this isn't a farming simulator, dude. It's the city simulator. How are you going to feed all your people, stupid? Yeah. Anyway, I really, really want to get it because I really loved SimCity growing up. And uh, again... All I can do is keep my fingers crossed. It's, I keep seeing rumors. I've been, well, I've been talking about it for years. I was heavily into SimCity and, and The Sims. And from the moment that The Sims were created, the idea was, is the way it seemed to me back then, the way Maxis was promoting it, is that The Sims would always be a part of SimCity. And then they're like, well, the, the two engines are completely different. And the time, you know, the time is different when you switch to some city, you, you know, I get it. But that's just excuses. There are no problems, there are only solutions. Right? So when you're playing in sim mode, sims mode, yeah, you're dealing with a different, you're dealing with different time. You're dealing with a slower time. You still speed it up, but you're still dealing with much slower time. When you switch to sim city mode, where you're playing on a development level, yeah, you can turn off aging. There's all there's always a solution. And they're talking about Sims 5 now. They haven't released it yet because they're saying, well, just the just nobody seems interested, and everybody's talking about how it's gonna kill it. It's going to kill the Sims. Just like they killed SimCity. You have the world's greatest franchise, and they just managed to kill them off. And it's that's just stupid. I would can you imagine being the, the people that are responsible for that? But yeah, we have a Madden every year, and every other game gets theirs, but the good stuff that we wanted in life isn't there. Damn you, Ocean Squiggly. You didn't listen to me back then. I've been saying all along for years. Then Sims 4. Come on, get back to the Sims. Uh the Sims 2 thousand engine would allow you to uh, it was fully 3d by the way everybody's like sims 4 is the greatest you're full of it sim city 2000 was maybe not as good looking but it was much better because it was fully 3d and once you were done creating a city you could go into your city by using other tools like streets of sim city you could all you could all Grand Theft Auto inside SimCity. I'm not kidding. If you've never seen Streets of SimCity, there are videos out there on YouTube about how it used to play. How awesome would a new Streets of SimCity be? To be able to create your city, go into your city in a Streets of SimCity in the year 2023, 24, 25, moving forward. Holy moly, that would be amazing. And then you could load up your your the city you just built in something like Sims Cop Simcopter. And fly around your cities. And they had arcologies back then were which were badass. And so again, that was SimCity 2000. Then they walked away and they went to Sims 4, which was 2.5D. And then Ocean Squiggle came along for 2013 and disregarded everything. Again, just I'm gonna we're gonna do what we want to do. We kept telling them, look, you're gonna kill this thing. You need to start really working the sims into it you know you get to the timelines and the dude stupid 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 but the point is it seems to be after all these years of campaigning and myself and other people um saying hey you know bring it back and link it to this and learn how to just figure it out you have ungodly compute power these days. Anything can be done. Figure it out. 
And so I've been slowly but surely seeing rumors coming back like there might be another SimCity. And they might incorporate the Sims. Well, great. Save yourselves. That's the only way I think you're going to. I think people have had enough of Sims 4. And, they, you know, you get a really good Sims game like Sims 2 and 3 where the AI is just unbelievable. And then you get something like Sims 4 where the, the AI is just dumb as bricks. It is, it's sad. And then you spend all this money, you know, on another iteration of The Sims, and it's just crap. It's just every. it's always it's with games. I don't know what it is that people come in and they start nerfing this and doing that to try to make more money, and they just end up killing the franchise. Instead of things getting better and better, like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Holy moly. And 2024 coming along, it's just, the Sobo is so good to us gonna make it better and better and better and here we have to cry about not having a good sims game or a good sim city game it's just it's stupid it really is it's just ridiculous and uh dumb. the basin and range province is a Thank vast you. physiographic region physiographic of the inland western united states and northwestern mexico the food it is defined by unique basin and range topography Characterized by abrupt changes in elevation, alternating between narrow faulted mountain chains and flat arid valleys or basins. The physiography of the province is the result of tectonic extension that began around 17 million years ago in the early Miocene epoch. The numerous ranges within the province in the United States are collectively referred to as the Great Basin Ranges, although many are not actually in the Great Basin. Major ranges include the Snake Range, the Panamint Range, the White Mountains, the Sandra Mountains, and the Tetons. The highest Tetons. point fully within the province is White Mountain Peak in California, while the lowest point is the Badwater Basin in Death Valley at minus 282 feet. The province's climate is arid, with numerous ecoregions. Most North American deserts are located within it. Clarence Dutton famously compared the many narrow parallel mountain ranges that distinguish the unique topography of the basin and range to an army of caterpillars marching toward Mexico. The basin and range province should not be confused with the Great Basin, which is a subsection of the Greater Basin and Range physiographic region defined by its unique hydrological characteristics. That was neat. Mother Nature, always plenty ahead. We better start this project 20,000 20, years ago. A lot of little airports around here. Probably all the shipping. The place we're looking for isn't even on the chart yet. Wow. It's close, too, really. Only 38 miles from it. ABXK. Unless I'm just not seeing it. You see it? I don't see it. That's crazy. There's all these airports in between here and there. That doesn't even make any sense. All right, well, we'll get a little bit closer and try to radio it in then.
the air has been really good here for flying that's for sure we've been cruising right along now We'll check all this stuff out tomorrow. There's a lot here. Is that Goodyear tires? What is this? Goodyear is Goodyear. Oh, Goodyear ballpark. Mystery castle. Tempe Diablo Stadium. A lot of stuff to see around here. State Farm. Well, good day to you too. Might have time for another bit of music. Oh, I got my fingers crossed that we're not going to get any copyright violations today. Two nine nine eight. Finally.
All right, get ready to land here, wherever this place is, and this is our second job for the day. So, wasn't so good as far as exploring. It was still beautiful. Didn't get a lot of really exciting places, but uh, it was pretty. Very good tune. Good one to end on. Talking about Denver, Colorado at the end there. Trying to bring the back end around. This is the song I was thinking about. Still a good tune. Then. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. Good enough. We are here. Uh, where is here anyway? What is this? Buckeye Municipal Airport. We traveled from traveled from over here. In uh, New Mexico, went down through here, came down here, and now we're up in here. So yeah, possibly tomorrow. I mean, well, it just depends on how much we want to sightsee. If we're just to just keep heading out west. We will be able to do it tomorrow.
Well, let's get paid, shall we? Transport from dispatch. Okay, nice job. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. We're still uh, down. We're still trying to recover from that crash. Those crashes the other day cost us almost a hundred thousand. We were up around nine nine million nine hundred thousand. But yeah, we have a ways to go till we get caught up to where we were. But. We got so much cash now, we'll be all right. You can really make the cash when you hire pilots. I didn't uh, want to spring for the extra pilots with 2024 coming along. Dispatch. Cargo unloaded and checked. So it is always a pleasure to work with you. During the pre-release, I had enough time to play with it, and uh... let's go. No, we're not going anywhere. going anywhere we're going back to the main menu so thank you thank you today for uh for tuning in those of you that did those of you that will thank you a lot i really want to appreciate the person who subscribed yesterday i don't have it in front of me uh it let me go over to youtube Do do. Mark Hamilton. Brian S. Thank you, Brian S. was a couple of days ago. And then Bri uh, Mark Hamilton. Sign up. And so the latest people that have subscribed that I have on my list here. Evo Snoop. Mark Hamilton. Brian S. Benjamin Sorrells. Scott Redman. Our, our Candle Candle. Razvan Radu. What a cool name. Andy Grant. And Trent Payne. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Every penny in this economy helps. If you get any uh, enjoyment out of these whatsoever, just stop it in. Thank you, thank you. Uh, if you're new, you just tuned in, please like and subscribe. Really use the help. And uh, cross your fingers, see how the uh, copyright stuff goes for this episode. I'm paying for a third party to provide me YouTube safe music and they've been having a big problem lately where all of the music's getting flagged and no bueno. If it keeps up, I just, I can't, I can't even, I'll just have to ditch the music, which really would blow because I love having music on these flights. I really do. Okay. Again, thank you for tuning in and I will... If everything goes well, I will see you Monday at 10 a.m. If anything comes up, maybe Monday at 2 p.m. And um, hopefully every day next week. I got my fingers crossed. You have a fantastic weekend. Okay? See you soon.